Hey guys, it's Megan and Angela Hello. again. Back for another video as we promised and we're doing such a good job, thank you. So this is Mortgage 101 oh, one. Video 2. So uh, today we're gonna be talking about the pre-approval process. I don't have much to do with that, so I'm gonna save any answers that I have until the very end. Um, yes, just to stay organized. So, she has a lot of important questions to ask at the very end, so you'll be a little bit more educated. Thank you so much for viewing our last video. Um, we had a lot of people reach out to us to um, ask us more questions, and I feel like we educated quite a few people. So um, we went through all the initial steps. Right now I'm gonna review how do you get to pre-approval. So let's get started. The pre-approval steps, um, the, origin, the first step that you want to take care of is fill out an application with your loan officer. Um, we can't go any further if we don't know who you are, what loan size you're requesting, those kind of things. So um, fill out an application. I have a website that has a secure portal so you can fill out an application with me without sitting face to face and it comes directly to me and I get notification. The second thing that I'll do after your application is I will take the information on your income. I will take the information and pull a credit report to see where your score is. Remember, you have to have a credit report score of 580 or above to apply for a loan or to be considered for a loan. Anyone is open for application at any time. The third is to provide your loan officer with your income. This will show that your monthly income is going to be able to support your proposed house payment plus your liabilities. So I need to know, you come to me and say, this is my interested uh, house payment, I'm shop, or excuse me, the shopping size for your house. I wanna buy a $150,000 house. I wanna put 3% down. It's my job to figure out that your liabilities plus your proposed house payment are not overextending you for your income to support that, okay? We cannot overextend you. That would be too much for you. The maximum percentage that we can take you to for income versus debt plus the proposed house payment is 43%. So you can do the math on your own. And if you don't qualify, because your income percentage is too, uh, your debt income is too high, then I will let you know what is an affordable uh, loan size for you. I just had a thought. Mm -hmm. um, some people aren't very good at math, okay. so all you have to do is go to Google and Google yes mortgage calculator or come to and me. there's yeah or come yeah. to me of course. <laughs> um, but you know, for all those, we're just kind of like a out of touch kind of society now. And yeah. if you feel like you want to look at the numbers before you go to someone. There's so many free calculators yes, online. Yes. Mortgage calculator, plug things. Yeah, in and if you're plug. confused, come to your loan officer, which would be me. Okay, so as long as everything lines up, I can issue a pre-approval letter to you. Um, this is what you use when you shop with your realty agent, and they will take it to uh, the homes that you're interested in, and they will present that to the seller and uh, hopefully start the negotiations, okay? Um, so let's go through the do's and don'ts uh, to get you ready for pre-approval. You do want to make sure your employment, asset, and personal info is correct on your application. If I have to do a lot of digging to verify that, that's going to be a lot of back and forth and it's going to hold up your, um, your timeline. Second, do be prepared to have disclosure on any non-payroll um, deposits into each account that you plan to use uh, for your um, application. So payroll um, deposits are really important, but if you're having large cash deposits, um, that throws up a red flag and we need to verify all that and it can add steps to your process. So how much is large cash deposit? That would be like, you know, the $10,000 range, the $20,000 range, cash deposits of that amount. Now, if you're Selling a house uh, for sale by owner, you can tell me, Angela, I sold my house, this is the proceeds from my house, we can research the contract and those sorts of things. Um, cash deposits can throw up a red flag if they're really big, okay? okay. Um, also, continue to make all of your payments on time. The liabilities that are reporting on your credit report, you need to make sure that you're keeping the good revolving credit and the timely payments. 
Also, um, respond to any requests from your loan officer in a timely manner. Once we start the, um, the process, you will have disclosures that are sent. I will be contacting you for further documentation. You need to be sure that you get those back to me, otherwise that can hold you up. And by timely, we mean like one day, yeah, two days, yeah, three days. Yeah. So these things expire really quickly and then you have to start all over yes. again. Yes, okay, the don'ts. Don't apply for any new credit after you make your application for a loan, uh, for a mortgage loan. Secondly, don't co-sign on a loan either. If your kid wants to go out and buy a car, don't be a co-signer on that right now because it will show against your liabilities. Um, don't have inquiries on your credit report. You don't wanna run around to Macy's and Kohl's and JCPenney and have all these inquiries that you are trying to acquire new credit. Um, don't make changes to your income, your residency, or your employment. You wanna make sure that those are all consistent when you come to me to apply for a pre-approval that I can trace all of that and you're not having any surprises, or I'm not seeing any surprises. Um, also, don't spend your closing costs. You need to be sure that you have cash reserves on hand to be able to come to the table when you sign your documents. And we don't wanna see that you're spending that on, you know, say you're going out and doing a shopping spree for a vacation or you booked a plane flight to uh, Europe. Okay, that will show us that you're, you're depleting your savings and your closing costs. So that's what I have for you. Well, I do have some important questions, like I said in the beginning, so we'll just jump right in here because we're kind of like short on time now. <laughs> but, um, so very first one is, how do you know what lender to choose? That's an excellent um, question. A lender should fit you, um, and you should basically interview lenders to make sure that they have a good rapport, uh, that they're answering all your questions, that they are consistent in their, um, their com communication with you, and be transparent, that they need to be truthful. Okay, um, does it matter if it's like a really big place that's yeah. kind of like a nationwide lender? Yeah. Or... I mean, it depends on your needs, but I would advise going with a local lender. Sometimes when you go with the big boys, um, you will call, you'll get nine customer service choices, you know, press one, press pound, and then you may end up talking to your loan officer that's in California or New York City. Um, and that can be really hard that they're not in town where you can go to their office. Or if you get a different yeah. person each time because it's just some big yeah. wherever that you're just a number. Um, so I do want to hit on the interview thing. You are interviewing them. Yes. You are the one paying them. So it's just like a job. They're, they need to interview to you, yes. so don't forget that. Make sure you're coming with important questions and you know what you want to ask because you want to make sure this is going to be the best fit, fit for you. 30-year mortgage. If you mm -hmm. never refi, you can be working with them yeah. for a long time. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, also, don't forget to ask them what products they have available. Uh, one size does not fit all. There is FHA, VA, uh, conventional, but mm -hmm. there are so many companies that have portfolio loans. Yes. Um, say you do have a 580 and that doesn't qualify you for conventional maybe. Yeah. Um, they, you know, or some products have a really high PMI yeah. and some products don't have any PMIs. So. A good loan officer will match you with the exact product that you need that will fit your needs and that's why I'm here. Exactly. Uh, another thing to ask is closing costs. Yes. What is an average size closing cost. Yes. You know you're not buying a million dollar home maybe, so what would an average price yeah. be? You yes. know, um, and that ties in with um, fees. Yes. You wanna make sure that you're prepared for how you wanna draw up a contract yeah. once you do start working with a real estate agent and mm -hmm. things like closing costs are gonna tie into that pretty yeah. heavily. Closing costs go line by line, and so you wanna ask them what is their appraisal fee, what is their origination fee that they charge as administration to uh, do the loan workup. You wanna ask them what their title fees are. Do they work with a good title company that gives them a savings? So you really wanna dig into the line by line. If they can't answer those questions, that means that there might be a line that, you know, is kind of like, oh, well, I didn't expect that there was gonna be a document workup fee. Um, and what about rates? Can you lock in a rate? Yes. You can, um, some banks will charge you an upfront lock-in rate uh, fee. And if they're doing that, you might wanna um, dig a little deeper. Uh, I will not charge you a fee, 
Locking in a rate, you can do it with Guild Mortgage in two ways. We have a lock and shop program, so you can lock your fee with uh, your rate with me. There's no cost. And then you can also float down if the market gets better. And this is all while you're shopping with Megan to find your house. You have 45 days to keep that rate lock. Second thing is rate lock comes after a contract. So it's not something up front that you need to be worried about. We will talk about rates uh, when you sign your contract and they are day real time uh, rates. So you can't talk to me about a rate today, do a contract in 30 days and expect the same rate. It rates might, literally change, they change every single every day. day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then last point I wanna uh, hit on here is, um, Several companies offer a special like rate or fee reduction based on your occupation So make sure you're asking that question say hey, I'm a teacher. Hey, I'm a hometown hero firefighter doctor yes. uh, Policeman there's so many places that offer uh, Specials for you all who are really serving yes. us and in particular on that point. I do offer those uh, discounts we don't uh, charge closing costs to any first responder, EMT, nurses, those teachers, those types of service workers. Um, and uh, I guess that's, that's about all I have. Awesome. So, yeah. Well, once again, thank you so much for tuning in. We really hope this was informative. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the mortgage process, please, please, please yes. like our video, subscribe below, and hit the doorbell so yeah. that you know whenever we post a new video. Yes. Um, we want to make sure that you're informed. And give me a call. I can help <laughs> you. Um, and I can guide you through it and I can answer all of your questions. Absolutely. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks. Thank Bye. You. Have a good one.